Greetings, everyone, and praise the Lord. Well, I'm telling you, God has certainly been good to us. Well, I'm, here's Pastor Brady once again to share with you the wonderful things that are happening. And I'm grateful for the blessings of God that have been bestowed upon all of us. Listen, did not we enjoy the message on this past Sunday by Pastor Relaford. In fact, I thank God for all of the staff pastors who did a tremendous job in delivering God's word the entire month of May. It was such a blessing. Many of them also participated with the Christian Education Initiative, the Journey to Restoration, it was a blessing what we saw on Sunday school, life impact. I'm telling you, we are striving here at New Bethel to continue to provide the best of ministry to the saints of God, even in the midst of us returning back, coming out of this pandemic. Uh, we're striving to continue to provide the best. And listen, I am just grateful for everyone, all those that are volunteering, those that are sacrificing in their giving, uh, the staff, the production team, the worship team. Oh, I'm just blessed of God and I hope that you too have been blessed. Well, we're praying for those that have lost loved ones and others who are still being challenged physically in their bodies. We know that God is able to deliver them and bring them out. And we're getting ready to start this special Life Impact Bible study as we now are in the month of June and we're moving to some new things. And listen, I wanted you to be updated on how the ministry is going to be flourishing through the summer months. So for that reason, I'm having this special Life Impact Bible study, so why don't you right now call a family member, friend, get on social media, uh, let them know that this session is about to begin because I want everyone to be able to hear and receive uh, what I'm sharing regarding the ministry and its operation for the summer. But while you're doing that, I want to go ahead and get started in prayer. So would you please pray with me? Father, Lord, we thank you for another day. Oh, God, we're grateful for how you've kept us. We're asking you for your continual mercies. Lord, we just honor you today. We give you all of our worship and we thank you, recognizing that you are our God and Savior and there's none like you. Now, Lord, there are many who are experienced the loss of a loved one, and we're asking you, Lord, that you'll comfort and strengthen them, undergird them, Lord, through the Holy Spirit, and Lord, let angels minister to them and their families, others who are facing uh, physical challenges in their body. We know that you're able to heal and deliver and we're asking that you'll give insight to the physicians and those that are attending to many who are ill in their bodies. Now, Lord, thank you for how you're bringing us through this pandemic. We give you all the praise and we're grateful for the progress that is being made. Lord, we love you, we bless you, and it is our desire that we will continue please you in our walk. Now have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh my goodness. I am feeling good in the Holy Spirit, and I pray that each of you too are being blessed. Uh, I want to encourage you, continue to do the work of the ministry. We must still be about bringing this gospel message, showing the light to those that are in darkness. And I do want to encourage each of you. Church is open and we're on our way back. So I pray that you'll continually do the work of God. 
So I want to get started today in the uh, presentation, and I'm going to be using uh, the PowerPoint presentation. So this way you can take notes and be able to share. And uh, again, this is also being available uh, at, uh, throughout the social media so that you can always uh, be able to refer back to the information and even share it with others. Today, our life impact living in fulfilled expectations. That's the acronym for life, living in fulfilled expectations. And uh, today, June 2nd, first Sunday here, uh, first Wednesday here in June. Don't forget, this is the year to rebuild, to restore, and to renew. It's amazing how God inspires us with his word and how it's so relevant. Even as we were at the beginning of this year, the Lord put this in my spirit for our theme and look how it is really coming to pass throughout the entire community and our country. We're rebuilding, we're restoring, and we're renewing. And that must always be our mission. Now, please remember this. Seasons require change. When we have different seasons, there has to be a change. Uh, uh, the message that Pastor Relliford preached on Sunday, the danger of staying the same. And the scripture uh, from Genesis chapter number eight using the New Living Translation in verse 22, as long as the earth remains, there will be planting and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night. And what the scripture is really emphasizing is that we will constantly be doing seasons. There will constantly be different points in our life that we will have to go through. And as I indicated, a new season in life means you must make the necessary adjustments to adapt or familiarize yourself to the change. Uh, change of seasons does not always relate to just the weather or physical conditions of that sense, but you can have new seasons in your personal life as you go and grow and you get to new stations of your life. Listen, you have to learn how to make the necessary changes and adapt to the new season. Now, that's exactly what we are in right now. As you know, we have been an entire almost year and a half in a pandemic. We have seen the worst. We've experienced uh, the heartache. We have been under lock and key almost. But now we are coming into a new season, not just the summer season, but a new season of life. We are emerging from this uh, uh, pandemic, this time that the entire world has experienced so much devastation, so much uh, uh, heartache, and now we're coming out as a result of us going into a new season, we must be prepared to make some changes, all right? It's, it, it's dangerous to stay the same. And that's the reason why I have ha I'm having this lesson today is to show you some of the changes that are necessary as we now are in a new season. Today's agenda of discussion is going to be on these four areas. 
First of all, what is the update with COVID-19 so that you as a congregation can be well informed and, and hear it from me as to what is the status of our COVID-19 conditions, especially here in the Wyandotte County and the KC metro area. Number two, I'm going to be sharing with you how New Bethel will have its in-person services for the summer, June, July, and August. I'm going to share the shift or the change that will be made relative to uh, us coming together for our services. Then I'm going to uh, introduce the thought of the new series that I'll be teaching uh, and ministering on Sundays and Wednesdays for the entire month. And then lastly, we'll look at some upcoming summer ministry events. All right. Remember, since the pandemic began, we have used this as our theme wisdom with our faith, all right? While many were uh, 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 suggesting that we just have faith, we said, yes, we do believe God, we have faith, but we still also must have wisdom. That means we will follow the science. Stay with me. So uh, when we got into the very beginnings, of this pandemic, this was what drove us as a leadership team and as the pastor on how the church would operate uh, in 2020. And as we entered into 2021, we have always said we will use wisdom with our faith. And we saw uh, the devastation where some just believe that they can just trust God and, and, and almost ignore the science, we said we will follow the science. This is what I'm getting at. Please listen, underline this. Just as we followed the science going into the pandemic, we must also follow the science as we come out of the pandemic. We've gotten used to a lifestyle. We've gotten used to all of the precautions and the protocols. But when we see the science now indicating that we are coming out, we cannot just continue to believe that we have to remain in the same issues, protocols, et cetera, that we had while we were in the pandemic. Now, I know it's very challenging because we had our minds really uh, 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 regulated. We've got to do this. We've got to do that. We got to, you, you can't have any interaction. You got to shut up in your house. Uh, the the, the COVID-19 virus might jump on you. <laughs> we, we did that. We were safe. We followed the science. But now as we're seeing, and I will show you, the science is saying now, we're coming out of the pandemic, all right? First of all, please understand the vaccinations are working. I know there was hesitancy from some at the very beginning because they only had emergency approval and we didn't know what the results were going to be and there's still a lot of conspiracy theories out there. But the science is telling us that the vaccinations are working. Hallelujah, we prayed for this. I remember 
on many a morning when we had the early morning prayer on Tuesdays and Thursdays, one of our prayers were, Lord, give insight to the scientists, the doctors, the entrepreneurs, that they can develop a vaccination that would be safe and effective. We prayed for this. Listen, so because we prayed for this, and I believe that it was not just our prayers, but prayers of believers around the world, that was how they were able to come up in a, a, a fantastic time to develop what is needed to get us out of this COVID pandemic. We prayed for this, hallelujah. So because we prayed for this, now we are seeing that the vaccinations are working. Listen, I just put these statistics up. I just, uh, of course, got the most, uh, uh, most current that I could, but the new daily COVID-19 cases now in the United States is at the lowest levels since March 20th of 2020. Remember, it was the middle of March that we actually exploded with the, vac uh, with the COVID-19. It was in the middle of March that they said, shut down everything, stay in your homes, don't go out. This was the middle of March. I remember it clearly because I had just returned from Hawaii at the beginning of March. We were seeing the first uh, 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 instances of COVID-19 in February. Remember, it was happening on a ship and then it was also happening in the Northwest part of the country around the Seattle area. That was the very beginning. And then it spread like wildfire. Whereas by the middle of March, the scientists and those that studied this said, listen, we need to shut everything down. Don't forget the Trump administration uh, with President Trump tried to minimize everything. We cannot forget that. So we then saw a great spike in the cases and the deaths, specifically as we entered into April of 2020. What we're seeing now, so that you can understand, because of the vaccinations and almost 50% of the country have had at least uh, one vaccination, 50% of those in the in America have had at least one vaccination, we're seeing that the vaccinations work because now new daily COVID cases here in America are at the lowest levels since March 20th. Hallelujah. I give God praise. May 31st, this past uh, uh, Monday, May 31st, there was only one confirmed case in Wyandotte County. Hallelujah. And there's, listen, there's only been one death in the last six weeks in this area as reported through the University of Kansas. Right now, there are some, a few that are hospitalized and everyone who is hospitalized, listen, did not have a vaccination. We've got to follow the science. So it's, it's, it's working. And as a man of faith, a man of God, I want you to know that I am encouraging you to get your vaccination. I know there's been a lot of theories uh, that are conspiracy theories, and we have done some that say they'll never get it, but we're seeing that the science does work. And remember, I praise God because I prayed for this. We prayed that a vaccination would be discovered. 
now that God has allowed this to be, we certainly give all of the scientists, the workers, the, the, the kudos for doing this because this was necessary to get us out of this pandemic. Now, what does it mean to be fully vaccinated? Now, as you know, we have like three vaccinations that we currently are using here in America, uh, the Pfizer, the Moderna, and the Johnson's and Johnson's. Being fully vaccinated, because with the Moderna and the Pfizer, you need two shots, the Johnson, you only need one. Once you're fully vaccinated, this is the results. Number one, you are safe from getting COVID-19. We're hearing the statistics from the Center of Disease Control, the CDC. We are safe who have received their full vaccination from COVID-19. Number two, if by chance you do get COVID-19 and you're fully vaccinated, you will not become seriously ill. That's the beautiful thing about it. Uh, Pfizer, I think, is like at 95% effective rate. That means there's a 5% chance that somebody still could get COVID. But the vaccination then will ensure that if you do get COVID-19, you will not become seriously ill nor become hospitalized. We cannot forget how we were fearful of what would happen if we received COVID-19. We cannot forget the devastation of people who went to the hospital, who were on respirators, and unfortunately, many who died. We cannot forget the effects of those who received COVID-19 and, and we had trouble breathing. Our oxygen levels were so low. We lost our taste. We lost smell. We had fevers. We cannot forget all of that that occurred with COVID-19. So, the vaccinations are so helpful because it will prevent you from getting COVID-19. And should you even get it, then you would not become seriously ill. And the third one is what the, the, the scientists and others needed to make sure with trials that even if we have been fully vaccinated and we did have COVID-19, we could not give it to somebody else. And they have discovered that the being fully vaccinated not only protects you, but it protects others from getting COVID-19. Now, please listen and see where we are at. While the vast majority of the New Bethel Church members are vaccinated, especially those that are older, you do not have to be vaccinated to attend the services. Please understand that if you still choose not to be vaccinated, you can still come to the service. We want you to come, but you will be required to still definitely wear a mask during the service if you're not fully vaccinated. The staff, all of those that are working in the ministry, those that are volunteering, our worship, our band, all of them will be required to get the vaccination. But if you're just coming to attend, you do not have to be vaccinated if that is your choice. I'm saying as your pastor that I would hope that you would get vaccinated. I 
I trust that you have heard me with what the science is saying, but if you still choose not to be vaccinated, don't let that hinder you from coming to church. You still will be able to do so. Now, to show you why we need to be vaccinated, for Blacks right now, the latest statistics tell us that 241 Blacks per 1,000 have been vaccinated. When we look at Native Americans, 100 per 1,000 have been vaccinated. And then when we look at uh, the whites, 338 per 1,000 have been vaccinated. So you can see that people of color, minorities, are lagging behind when it comes to getting vaccinations. And then I, I put this up here for you so you can see the vaccinations per county as of May 28th. All ages who have been vaccinated, all the people in Wyandotte County is right now only at 30%. Johnson County, I put that up there as a contrast, 47%, almost 50% in Johnson County, whereas one third in Wyandotte County. And the same is true for Jackson County on the Missouri side, 33%. Now, when we look at those that are 65 and older, that was our major concern. That was the thrust. Right now, 62% of those that are 65 and older have received their vaccination. In Johnson County, that number is at 88%. And in Jackson County, it's at 70%, almost two thirds to four fifths. But when we look at those that are 18 and older, up to that age point of 65, only 40% here are vaccinated in Wyandotte County, 61% in Johnson County, and 43% in Jackson County. That's why we're pushing. You must get vaccinated, especially to our millennials, to those that are 30, 20, and uh, they've not yet opened up vaccinations for those that are 12 and under, but even for children as they return back to school. I am strongly encouraging you to be vaccinated. Now, with all of that said, and with all of the data, and with all of the statistics, how will we have services here at New Bethel for the summer? Starting June 13th, not this Sunday, but starting next Sunday. Next Sunday, there's going to be just one service. As you know, We've been having two services, one at 9 a.m., one at 11 a.m. It has gone very smoothly. In between, we did proper cleaning, and the staff, the band, the worshipers, the production team, we have worked hard. The, the staff pastors had a chance to see how it's been with me for the entire time. Uh, you have to minister twice. You have to uh, be able to minister and serve multiple times. So what we're doing now for the summer, as we come back, we're taking baby steps. We're taking incremental steps back to normal. We're not just rushing in, even though every county, both in Missouri and Kansas have lifted the mask mandate, all right? But even though they've lifted the mask mandate, they are saying each particular business or operation can make their own regulations. 
That's why in some stores I go into, you must wear a mask. Others, the employees don't wear a mask. So it depends upon each business. That's what we're doing as a church. I want us to still be safe. I still want us to get through this mental change, but we have to make a change. It is dangerous to stay the same. So starting next Sunday, not this Sunday, next Sunday, somebody say next Sunday, June 13th, there will be just one service. Now, we had a service at nine, we had a service at 11, so this one service will be at 10 a.m. We're changing. The one service that we're having will be at 10 a.m., not this Sunday, next Sunday. One service, 10 a.m., the service is still scheduled to be only one hour long, all right? That means that after the service, it'll be concluded around 11, no more than 11.10. You have time to go do brunch, spend time with your family, enjoy the summer season. So we wanted this to be a blessing. We're coming out, but we're doing it strategically, incrementally, incrementally, and we're doing it with a purpose. So one service beginning next Sunday, 10 a.m., one hour. Got it? One, one, one. Hallelujah. One service, 10 a.m., one hour. Now, for those who still are uncomfortable with coming out, that 10 a.m. service will also be live virtually, all right? So there will be a virtual service live at 10 a.m. We're considering showing that same service again, even in the evening. But right now, one service, 10 a.m., one hour, and it will be a virtual service. For the month of June, as we again are taking steps, I'm asking that you would still call in and make a reservation for the 10 a.m. service. Now, if you show up and you did not make a reservation, I'm not saying we're going to send you away, but to be safe, I'm asking if you would please make a reservation online on our website. And of course, that's at newbethelkc.org or call the church office and they will process it for you. We're increasing the sanctuary in the, uh, 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 we're increasing the seating in the sanctuary to between 150 and 175, but it will still be in pods, pods of twos, threes, fives, ones. So regardless of the size of your party, you will be in a pod still safe with some distancing from others. This is again to help us even mentally as we make the change. But we will be safe and we will strive to get everyone in. Now, if we get to over 175, we are preparing to have an overflow in the chapel. We're preparing to have an overflow in the chapel should we get above 175. So everyone who wants to attend can attend, and we certainly want to encourage visitors. We're seeing people come back for the first time in over a year. I get it. People are still making that adjustment. So we understand. Now, what will be the protocols? The health safety protocols will be as follows. The temperature will still be scanned upon entering the church. Right now, we've been blessed with two of the top uh, 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 
tech, technologies when it comes to taking a temperature. All you do is stand in front of the device. It will let you know that you are within the temperature range and will encourage you just to wear a mask. You don't have to have any interaction with a person. God has blessed us through the NBC Community Development Corporation and other friends that we have this, these devices both in the front as well as the rear of the church. So when you come in the church, you would be scanned. Everyone, we're still asking that you would come in the front and then exit out the back to the parking. So everyone would come in the front. If a person has challenges walking, you could drop them off and then pick them up at the rear. Now, listen very closely. Mandatory masks are required to be worn as you enter into the church. So everyone should have a mask on when they enter into the church. But if you are fully vaccinated, you can remove your mask after you're seated, just like they do at the restaurant when you have to wear a mask coming into the restaurant. But once you're seated, you can remove your mask, all right? This is the same principle. If you are fully vaccinated, wear your mask into the service. Once you're seated, then you can remove your mask, all right? Now, that's at your option. If you're fully vaccinated and you still want to wear your mask through the whole service, go ahead with your bad self. We are not pressuring anyone either to wear the mask or not wear the mask. It's at your discretion. However, if you're not fully vaccinated, you must wear your mask the entire service. If you're fully vaccinated, then you can remove your mask after you're seated if you want to, all right? If you don't want to, Keep on wearing it, all right. But if you're not fully vaccinated, you have to continue to wear your mask. I hope I'm making this as clear as possible. We're making these incremental steps as we return back to normal because we still wanna be safe and we want everyone to mentally understand that they're safe. Now, as we continue, listen, Children's Church will still be virtual for the month of June. As you know, they have done an excellent job with providing virtual lessons. That's not just the Children's Church, but the teens, uh, the teen ministry as well, uh, with Sister uh, uh, Nickens. Uh, Angela Nickens, they've done an excellent job. The Children's Church with the Teen Ministry. That will continue in June virtually, but in July and August, even they will return back to some type of live service. They will have all of the safety protocols. They'll probably just have one service. They might even be outside but we want even the children to get back to coming to the house of God. And that way, some families who right now are at home because they have children will be able to come to the service as well. So again, for children's church ministry and the teen ministry for the month of June, their lessons still will be virtual, but July and August, they will be live, all right? And then Sunday school is the same way. Sunday school 
with uh, them doing an excellent job under the purview of the Christian Education Department will still be virtual. They have had some excellent lessons. But then July and August, they also will go live. We'll explain the time. We'll explain how that will be done when we come to the month of July. Now, even for June, July, August, we will still not have a nursery ministry, all right? Uh, the, there's no vaccinations yet, especially for babies. So we will not have that area open for the, the ministry to keep your children, but the room will be open in the event any mother has to do feeding if, there has, uh, if you have a child that might get angsty and you need to go and take them in to be uh, comforted, that will be open, the area will be open, but it will not have anyone there to man it. Hopefully that has given you some insight as to how we will be operating for June, July, and August. I'm always available if you have any questions. Uh, we will respond to them, but we're doing this to be safe. Uh, the Bible says there's safety in the multitude of counselors. I've got interaction, feedback I've shared with others, and this is the best way I feel we can uh, move forward. Now, I'm very excited because starting this Sunday, uh, I'll be doing a new series for the entire month, both on Sundays and Wednesdays. Uh, it's entitled Live Your Best Abundant Life. Woo! I'm telling you, I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm excited. It's going to be fantastic. For the next four Sundays, the next four Wednesdays, this will be the theme. I've already got a download of information. I've been working feverishly on this. I was inspired, no challenged by the Lord to cause people, saints specifically, to see that they're living beneath, many who are living beneath the divine expectations. See, God has an expectation for us hallelujah, to live. Remember, the scripture let us, lets us know that uh, the Lord said, I am come, hallelujah, that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. That, of course, is going to be the theme scripture from St. John 10 and 10, but the church as a whole specializes in getting people ready spiritually for heaven. That's why we're in existence. But often we've done that to the neglect of how we as Christian believers should live abundantly in this life. And it, it We've got to change our paradigm. And listen, it's not about living a sinful life or engaging in things that we know are contrary to what the Lord is expecting of us. But at the same time, we should live a, 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 a holy, blessed life abundantly enjoying the human side of living. That's what I'm getting at. God wants us, has promised us, has, has told us we are to live life. We are to be blessed. And, and, and many of us are not living to that level. We're beneath the expectation of what God intended. I'm getting excited already. So regardless of your station in life, this lesson is to help us all understand there is a better life to be lived. Hallelujah. I hope that you will certainly 
be a part of all of the lessons. It's a series. And I'm afraid if you miss one element, you might then throw off the entire uh, 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 purpose or objectives for why the syllabus has been designed. So over the entire month of June, I will be sharing principles, all right? I'll be sharing principles, some from the scriptures, that hopefully will be informational, inspirational, but I pray impacting. That after this month of June, it'll launch us into a new realm of living as we come out of the pandemic. Hallelujah. God is expecting us to live our best life. Live your best abundant life. Now, on Sundays, there still will be worship. Glory to God. We're still going to be worshiping uh, the praise team, uh, the band, all of us. We're still going to be in corporate worship. But you might find the presentation of my message a little different than what you're used to. But I am encouraging you for each of these to take notes. Please, you can bring your own a notebook. Uh, if you will have some pads and pens available for those who might not have it. But I want you, this is a good instance where if you get a journal, uh, uh, get that journal so that you can cover it for the entire month of June. I'm encouraging you. Get one of your old journals, get a journal that you've not used, uh, buy a journal, take notes, and then in between the services, oh, glory to God, meditate and develop what the Lord is saying for you to move to a better life. Glory to God. So this is going to be not just me, but you taking time as well. We're in the summer, the, the weather's getting better. Walk, meditate, get by yourself and all that's being downloaded. And because it's gonna be recorded, you can always go back, pick up something that you might've missed. But I am praying that this will have a great impact for you. Now, for the entire month, it's gonna be casual dress. Uh, you, you feel free to come casual dress. It's going to be for an hour. And listen, I'm going to be uh, recording the Wednesday lesson at noon. So anyone who wants to be a part of the noonday recording, you can do so. Uh, we're not officially starting noonday Bible class, but for the month of June, I'm going to be recording the lesson uh, at noon in the sanctuary, and then it'll be uh, 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 shown at 7 p.m. on Wednesday evening. If you would actually like to be here live at noonday, I'm encouraging you to come on. Hallelujah. There will not be like a, a, a songs or worship. I'm going to come out. We're going to record it. Uh, it'll be like 45 minutes to an hour like we normally do. And then you will be here live. And maybe afterwards, I will entertain questions or comments, things of that nature. So it's going to be a, a fantastic series. I hope that you'll be blessed and will uh, come out. Now, giving you some special dates uh, and some upcoming events, and I'm almost finished. Thank you for being with me. Uh, but this coming Sunday, there still are the two services. June 6th, this Sunday, still the two services, 9 and 11. One service does not start till next Sunday, all right? And that's at 10 a.m. This Sunday, we're going to be doing something that we've not done in a while, all right? 9 a.m., there's going to be the service. I'm starting the new series. 10.15. We will anoint and bless those that have acquired new vehicles 
or if you want your car blessed. This is going to be done at 1015 in between the services. So if you come to the early uh, 9 a.m. service, all you have to do is get in line for the blessing. And if you're coming to the 11 o'clock service, just come a little earlier and get in line to be blessed. We're going to be blessing everyone who's got a new car. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Remember, it's been quite a while since last year when we had the outdoor service that we've blessed any vehicles. And as you know, I believe that we need to anoint and ask God to bless and cover and keep our vehicles. In fact, everything we do, we want to give it back to the Lord. Then in the 11 o'clock service, we are going to be doing baby dedication. All right. If you have a baby or a child that you'd like to have dedicated, again, we've not done this since uh, last year, I think in one of the outdoor services, I'm encouraging you to do so. Call the church office. You must do that tomorrow. 913-281-2002. Make the arrangements with Minister Noel Swinton uh, and we will bless. Now, it, it's going to be different. Uh, we'll not be doing the same as we've done in the past, holding the baby, showing the baby to the congregation, but we are going to anoint and dedicate each of the babies because even though we're coming out of this pandemic with protocols, we still need the anointing of God on our lives. Somebody say amen. June 13th coming up is Father's Day, and you'll hear more about it. Uh, July 17th and 18th, that Saturday and Sunday, we're working on something for a special church anniversary weekend. We're looking at some type of barbecue activities outdoors, uh, having uh, uh, something. You, you'll hear about it, but it's going to be exciting uh, and I can't wait to share with you, with you more as it is being developed. All right, that concludes my presentation for today. Thank you so much uh, for being a part of the lesson. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, remember you can always get those to me and we'll try to respond. Be blessed and know that God is still with us and I am looking forward to seeing each of you this Sunday. Once again, I know I'm being redundant. This Sunday, two services, 9 and 11. We're blessing cars at 10.15 a.m. in between services. We're dedicating babies in the 11 o'clock service. Next Sunday, June 13th, we move to one service at 10 a.m. for one hour. All right. I can't wait because God has put in me this good, blessed lesson. Live your best abundant life. God bless you. And always remember that I'm thankful for you who are supporting us with your tithes and offerings. Is everybody doing it? No, but I am grateful for those who are consistently giving, that's the way we're able to do all the things that we're doing here in the ministry. God bless you. And on behalf of Angela and I, we love you and we certainly solicit your prayers. Be blessed in Jesus' name.